Ross, I guess one of the questions is, how long does, um, does it take until the issue of English language or not stops being an issue? So to use the example of sort of Greek migration, you know, 50 years ago, um, surely there's an argument that in the main, the Greek community responds to English language advertising now. Okay. What we've done is we have programs in the English language. Uh, we have um, the universities. We have, a, you know, all the students and the body of the universities have their own program. Um, we, we bring in singers from Greece and all the youth flock to them because of the connection of music. So we've seen a, a big change in the last five, ten years that has brought in my generation, my friends who, who um, have, have been in business for many years, have been very busy bringing up a family and all of a sudden they've got a bit of time and they're getting involved back in the community. Okay, we'll cover that more. Tim, more could I, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I think the, the assumption in the question is that if you're here a long <coughs> time, you are definitely going to be able to speak English and that's just not the case. So if, if, when you do the data on language spoken at home and English language competence. The older the age cohort, the poorer the language. And very much is a, a group which came post-war, especially Italians and Greeks, and they'll go to their graves not having the English oh. capacity mm. to, to do things. Definitely. Where the argument is, and I suppose the discussion is, is not one of at what point a community loses language. It's at what point do we lose the community? Mm. So that mm. same Italian and Greek Connecting. community is dying off at a rate of 5 to 10% every five years. Now, that's a great point. And actually, Steve, I know you've been looking at some of the Roy Morgan research into yeah. uh, what that says about where, where we're at as a community or communities. Uh, what kind of leapt out at you in that? Well, firstly, the size of, of what we're dealing with and the, the diversity of languages. In, it's very important in the context of today that you understand that this new... Uh, newspaper uh, or print owner inspired piece of research called Emma does not survey whatsoever anyone from a non-English speaking background. So they are completely and utterly ignoring the total Australian community. Morgan will tell you, not that I'm selling Morgan, but Morgan... You are a little bit. But I'm endorsing. <laughs> Send them a message, Tim. <laughs> Pay me. <laughs> Morgan say, look, with great difficulty, we, we recruit and we survey these non-English speaking background uh, people, but they're part of the Australian population. We need to know what their habits and behaviours are. Uh, not that they've got extensive um, non-English speaking background media covered, but at least they cover the languages and the purchase decisions and broad media consumption. Uh, so, uh, from my discipline, which is to work out strategies and to work out ways of communicating, d data is everything. You know, understanding what pathways, and I learn stuff today. I'm furiously taking notes from all the other speakers at the table because it's sparking off ideas about how, when I get the next brief, I could handle it better and who I could go and ask questions of. Um, so, from a, a point of view of uh, uh, relevant research, uh, Morgan is the main tool that we use and, and I'm happy to say that uh, uh, in, in context of today, it's the one that actually covers the whole universe. Uh, so people from that 20% of non-English speaking background and recognises that 50% of either the father or the mother coming from a non-speaking English background. Well, here's a good question from Twitter, and I'm going to come yeah. to you first, Wazer, yeah, on this okay. one. So, so by all means, wrap both answers yeah, yeah. Into, the, into the one. This is from uh, Declan Patrick Kelly, who asks, we've heard a lot about traditional adverti advertisements. Where does the panel see social and online advertisement delivery fall? Um, yeah, that's actually what I was going to say. Perfect. Is, um, it's like you've read his mind. Yes, obviously. Um, so, I mean, with... With the young people today now, um, well, first of all, they get some of the information from traditional media, but many of them actually get it on social media as well. So um, if traditional media don't talk to them, they just go on social media. So, uh, it, it, I mean, uh, for me, um, for instance, you know, I don't really watch TV anymore because I don't like the shows. Um, I only watch, you know, some of the really good ABC and SBS shows, actually. Um, so um, you're actually, the, the, the mass media is actually shrinking for younger people. 
Um, and yeah, so if you can't communicate with them, and, and especially with um, those who speak a different language, they can easily go on and just access international media. Um, if they want information, that's what they will go. So if you don't speak to them, then they'll just find another way. And, and many of them actually prefer podcasts, actually, because they don't have to wait till, you know, 10 o'clock at night um, in order to actually listen to a show. And you can access it anywhere. Um, now, Mohammed, your day job takes you into the world of digital and social. That's right. And uh, I think, it, you know, mainstream media has moved on to the internet. A lot of us have moved on to the internet, um, and so too has multicultural media. It's also uh, diversifying um, the formats that it comes in. Um, I was just speaking to, during the break to Ahmed Kalani, Kalani who runs a uh, MuslimVillage.com, which is just a you know it's just a news source for Muslim kids, uh, or not Muslim kids for Muslim people, um, but it has quite a diverse range also of, of broader Australians connecting with it. Um, and that's, uh, that's a website. It has its own news service. And um, so it is an ethnic paper, but it's on, online. And they're reaching uh, internationally over a million people. Um, now, I've got to make a s nice smooth transition here without trying to link the two. But think about this, right? We talk about the importance of connecting with audiences on social media. If ISIS can recruit people through a multicultural Broad, you know, broadcasting thing. I'm sure we can as well. <laughs> Nothing to do with Muslim Village, of course. It's a separate thing. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people, yeah. you know, the, the forces of darkness know how to use social media to connect to multicultural and different language groups all around the world. They see the value of it. They get success from it. Uh, I think we absolutely should be thinking about how to be creative. I mean, that's, that's the name of the game. If you're not creative, you're going to fall behind. And that's an interesting hope. What, why is it? Why, why are they finding progress that way, do you think? Because it's reaching people. That's where, that's where people are. Um, and and, and, uh, and they, people are in their bedrooms at night on, on social media or on websites. Um, and that, I mean, that's one avenue. I'm sure if they could get an ad in you know, Neos Cosmos, they probably would do that as well, but they're not, probably not going to get that approved. So, you know, so it's, it's, about, it's about being creative. It's about diversifying. Um, and it's about reaching people where they're at. Here's the sorry. thing. Sorry. Here's I'll come. I'll come. I'll come to you seconds. Okay. Please. No worries. <laughs> now I was going to say um, that's that's where I suppose what Wealth was saying that it actually touches people's hearts. I mean, that's what you need to do in order to actually get people's attention. Because if you don't do that, um, then yeah, okay. Well, the information is there, but you know, I, I, I'll forget it tomorrow. And, um, and as I mentioned, you know, in my presentation that, you know, some people actually feel very isolated. Um, and if they're not getting the information from mainstream media or, you know, community radio, where do they go? Um, they go social media. Okay. Steve, then Pino. But here's the thing. In a lot of those new channels, people don't expect advertising mm -hmm. or they don't <coughs> accept it. It's yeah. their medium talking to them personally to support what everyone's done. And putting advertising in there is an anathema to them. They don't actually want it. Mm. And that's one of the challenges that we're starting to get, where clients want to jump into some of these areas. And, of course, when bigger companies like Google start buying up these great startups, like, you know, and they start wanting to commercialise them, there is a real pushback of... Well, now, wait a second here. I, I started to use this particular channel because I felt it was a channel that communicated with me and there was no advertising here. Don't start heaping advertising on me. We're, we're tolerant about advertising in conventional channels because we've grown up with it and we accept that if we're getting a television picture for nothing, advertising is how it's paid for. But for some of these new things, not so much. 